Hello and welcome back to our Final Fantasy XIV Online Complete Beginner Guide in 2021. If you are thinking about playing Final Fantasy, the MMORPG, or you are actually playing but you need some help to like what should you actually do, well this video is suited for you. It's not for the pro players who already play the game, but it's for the starters and people who want to try the game. Well, you have come to the right place. So sit down, relax, and we will go through a lot of topics. You can also see the topics in the timeline of the video, but we will teach you, well, I will teach you everything about the game you need to know before you can really get into it. So let's go directly to it. So the first topic we're going to talk about is should you play this game as free to play or should you actually buy the game? Well, if you buy the game, you can buy the complete edition, which gives you the basic game, all the expansions. Basically, the basic game is called A Real Reborn, then Heaven Sword, which is the next expansion. The next expansion again is called Stormblood and the latest currently is Shadowbringers. We are getting a new one coming later on, but it's first later on. And also, if you're thinking about which level are you actually playing through in these expansions, you can see here that Real Ribbon, which is the basic game, is from level 1 to 50, Heaven's Fall is 50 to 60, Stormblood is 60 to 70, and Shadowbringers is 70 to 80. And the new expansion, which is coming later this year, is 80 to 90. So, if you're thinking about should you buy the game or should you play free to play? I would just say, if you're a new player, I highly recommend you trying out the free to play version, which you can play through the whole Real Reborn and Heaven Sword. It's more than 100 hours of content, so I can highly recommend, you know, trying out first the free version before you actually put money into this game because you don't know if this game is actually something for you. So highly recommend you try out the game for free first, play through Real Reborn, Heaven Sword. If this is something for you, buy the game, but keep in mind it's you have to pay a monthly subscription like World of Warcraft and stuff like that. So that is a thing you have to remind you. But when you play the free version, there is some restrictions. You can only go up to level 60, which is the end of Heaven Sword. You, can, you can't send tales, which is a whispers from other MMOs, but you cannot start a discussion with someone in private message. You can create groups, you can, but you can join groups but, and you cannot play with guilds, which basically is called free companies in this game. So basically guilds in every other MMO in the world, but free companies in Final Fantasy. So that is the thing you can do, but just letting you know the possibilities between free to play or buy. I did the mistake that I actually bought the game instead of just trying it, but I don't mind buying it because I like the game, so I have no problems with it. But I'm just warning you before you might do the same mistake as me and you don't like the game then. And then of course you have wasted some money. So highly recommend you try out the game, see what you think. So the second topic we're going to talk about is friends. And it's actually a bit odd thing to mention, but I highly recommend you playing Final Fantasy with a friend who already have maybe tried the game or you know find a person who are already experienced in, in the game because Final Fantasy XIV can be hard to get into so if you already know a person who plays the game or some, something like that it helps you so much. I used to stream the game not knowing nothing about the game but my, ch my chat in the game well you can say the stream chat was so helpful to guide me through all the things which has been super hard if I didn't have them to help me out. So just a really good like a reminder, see if you have a friend who already played Final Fantasy or you know maybe try and find some new friends who, have, who plays it because it will help you so so much. As for the third topic we're going to talk about data centers which is basically you could say server groups in other MMOs. So in this game you have to choose between a data center as you can see on my screen right now we have over here European, so if you're from Europe, you will be either playing on Chaos or Light, and of course you have North American servers over here, or you have Japanese data centers here. So basically, you have to pick between which of the server groups do you want to play on. Of course, if you're in Europe, it only makes sense to play on Chaos or Light, since you will have the lowest MS, like ping, to the server, which helps you like 10 times when you're playing the game, because you don't, you don't want to have delay or lag on your spells and stuff like that. At the moment, if you play on Chaos or Light, you cannot play with the opposite, like, well, data center, 
but in the new expansion Endwalker, we are getting data sender visits, which basically means if you're over here, you can visit over here and play with friends. We don't know what it actually means in the terms of technical things, but they will update us later on how it actually like technically will work. But as for now, you cannot play with people over here if you're here or like here to here, but we might get something in the future soon, but it's just saying it. So like, but else you have just a normal servers. And if you play on chaos data group, you can play with any of the servers in here. You just have to like visit them from an ATRS. I will tell you about that later, but yeah, basically you can play with anyone here, but you will have to visit them. So of course, if you like want to just randomly meet in each other in town time to time, you probably you would have to play on the same server, but else you can also still visit your friends on the other servers as long as it's on the same data center as we speak right now. Will change probably in Endwalker, which will release later this year. So for, for the most important part, we're going to talk about the character creation, which is the first place you basically start when booting up the game, except logging in. But I don't think you need a guide for that, hopefully. So when you come into the game, you have to pick between these races. And as you can see here, we have pure and don't and um, I don't know how to mention or say these races, but you know, yeah. But we have these called Hyor, which have male, female. We have Elesan, which has male, female. We have Lalafel, which is, has male and female. We have Mekote, which has male, female, surprisingly enough. Then we have Rokadun, which has male, female. And we have Aura, which has male, female. Then we have Rodgar, which has only male, surprisingly. Yeah, you, you probably thought I was about to say a male, female, but no, we only have a male version for Rodgar. How they get kids, don't ask me, but yeah, they only have males. Then we also have Viera, which only has female, but we know in the next expansion, we are also getting male versions of the Viera. I don't know which races, which is actually most popular, but they are quite different looking at. And when you, you, you will probably see when you go to the next page of the car, it was already the race. You can see here, they actually have different stats. And you might ask now, what does this have to do with me? Is it actually like important, which the stats that you're getting from each of the races? And the question for that is no. Because if we take a quick look at all these stats, this is the stats you're getting from each of the races. Like you can say the starting stats for each of them. And yes, maybe it sounds good on paper right now, but in end game, when you're doing raids and stuff like that, no one is really thinking about this. And trust me, I have asked different pros about this and no, these stats are totally ignored by people in end game. So play which race you want, no matter how they look, no matter what, which one it is there's no difference just play whatever you want don't think about these minor stats because in end game no one thinks about it basta boom okay just to like put it down so if you get back we have all the races here as we probably just talked about like two seconds ago um but yeah so you just pick any race for example in this case i would just pick uh, the hero and the female and we say confirm so here from you will have to choose how you look like. So you have like, you have to choose like a clan and you can see actually also the clan has different stats. But again, as I said before, these stats is nothing that you really have to think about. So in this case, I can choose between the Midlander or the Highlander, which is like just looking a bit different also. But in this case, we're just going to go with the Midlander and say confirm. Here from you would see that we have uh, different stuff you can choose between. We have like hate, muscle tone, bust size, all different things. You can like, you can just go crazy in creating your character, like going all crazy. But we're not going to do this in this video. We're just going to click on randomize like a couple of times and boom, we just got boom, boom, boom. We just got like this. This is our randomized character. There we go. So in this case, this is our character. We will say confirm. It will ask you if you want to save the appearance. We're going to say no, because I don't want to save the appearance. I, I, I like to like create a nuke. Well, I'll come back to very soon why you don't want to probably save it. In this case, you have to, if you're into role playing, you will have to choose the birth, like the kind of like your foreseen calendar. 
and you, you yeah basically your birth calendar so basically in my world i just like i'm from april so that means i would be like one two three four and then my birthday which i don't want to pick here because then you're probably gonna be like something evil against me so i'm just gonna kind of like randomly pick a number here and say confirm from here on you have to choose your patron's deity again this is purely for role players so like if you're into this like read up on the stuff but i'm just gonna again pick anything randomly because i don't care about this step here and then we're coming to one of the most important things in the game which class are you gonna play the fun thing here is that they call a class here but actually in the game it's called a job it's basically like a, it's your job yeah so every other mmo almost call every in the game like a class but in this game they call it a job which is strange fun but yeah so in this case you would have to choose between the gladiator pugilist marauder lancer archer you can basically go down here and say i want to see how the job equipment looks like so you can see this is like looking as a gladiator pugilist marauder lancer archer then we have some magic ones conjurer Tartar march and arcanist these classes is actually not the final classes and when you play in the end game you will not meet a single person who has this class name because this is the early classes in the game and yes let me explain to you so basically in the game they have like they have these dps characters so you can see here we have the monks ragroom ninja samurai bard machinist dancer black mage summoner red mage blue mage this means this is the class that you will actually see in the end game that is the final classes the upgraded versions of it and as you saw none of the list we saw before is on this one if you go to the next we have the healers also here we have the healers we have the white mage scholar or astrologian and then we have the tanks which we have paladin warrior dark knight and gunbreaker basically this is all the classes so if you like go away from this one here we have all the classes here which is like a very small for you probably on the eyes right now but this is all the classes free healers four dps so for, for, sorry four tanks and what do we have four eight nine ten eleven dps classes very cool and in the next expansion we are getting two more classes which is one is going to be a healer and if i am not wrong this that that's called sage and the other one is a reaper and i'm pretty sure it was a dps um i'm pretty sure of yeah pretty sure of and then you might ask, well, okay, Dwarlin, but what about the classes we have here on the character creation? What, what, is, what are those then? What are those? And well, let me show you here because below my, my webcam here, you can see right now, the gladiator means it's the paladin. The pugilist is the monk, the marauder is the warrior, the lancer is the dragoon, the archer is the bard, the conjurer is the white mage, the tautama is the black mage, arcanist is summoner or scholar. You can ba basically switch between two classes when you play this one. So that means if we go away from this one, you can see all the classes here on the right side is getting an upgrade to a new upgraded stronger version of themselves. So you're not going to play these in end game. You're basically going to upgrade to a new newer version. So basically, if let's say I wanted to play the Gladiator, okay, then we look below my webcam and see, okay, Gladiator basically becomes a Paladin. And if we take this list from, we can see here, okay, Paladin is a tank. Boom. You should probably take a screenshot of what you're looking at right now so you can see all the upgraded classes and all the new classes right over there. Boom, 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 boom. So basically, this is for helping you. So if you go down to Disciples of Magic, you can see here that we have Conjurer, Tarama, Arcanist. The only one of these who becomes a healer is the Conjurer. So Tartama is becoming a black mage and Summoner Scholar is for an Arcanist. So if we go back to our list here, we can see here on healer. So we have white mage, which basically the conjurer is becoming. So if I wanted to play a healer, I would have to choose between the conjurer. So thanks to this list here, it really helps us like getting into which class should we get. An important note to letting you know is that every class, well, every character you create in this game can have all the classes. That's why it in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to have different characters because one character in this game can be all classes, not at the same time, but you can basically switch between them. So when you get to like a level 30 or something like that, when you finish like some of the main quests in this game, you can then begin to unlock the other classes, jobs, jobs. I mean, they call a class here, but in the game, they call them jobs. So basically later on, you can unlock them 
And like in World of Warcraft, where you like switch talent spec, like going from Frost Mage to Fire Mage, that the same thing you do here. You basically just switch to a whole different class. It's it's pretty cool. So basically, on my main, I play Boria, which is the Marauder here, but the Warrior the upgrade version. And then I play White Mage, get the Conjurer here, but the upgrade version, White Mage on my off spec. But you can unlock all the specs and just level them up. It's insanely how cool this system is. So no more alts because you can have everything on one character. But let's go ahead. Let's uh, pick a Marauder. I, I like that. Actually, no, let's take a Lancer. We like that. It's pretty cool. So let's confirm it. Here you have to choose between the servers. And again, keep in mind that I have in, well, in the start of the game, I actually picked like, um, chaos you have to like when you open up the screen like i showed you before with the, the data centers you have to pick the data center you want to play on in my case i'm playing on chaos on the Re europe servers and here i can pick now a character well the server where i want to have my characters i can see i have one character on cyberus and four on lucy louis the very important thing you have to think about here is very important you can see here I can play on these servers here. Right now, I can only create a character on these three because they are like, um, you can say, um, free. There's not many people have created recently here. But if you look at these two, they have like a star. This star icon means they will give me granted experience bonus. You can see above my head right now, it says XP bonus are currently being granted to all new players created on this world. And then you might think, hmm, okay, what is this deal? Yeah, basically you get a buff, like a passive buff you cannot take off on. I'm pretty sure you cannot take it off. But it gives you 100% experience from all quests and monsters. So basically if you complete a quest which gives you 12,000 experience, you get 24,000 experience points. It's insane. I have a character right now with this buff on and it goes so fast. I'm level 38 and my main quest is like level 22 because it goes so fast. It's, it's so fun. And it only goes up to level 70. But then when you get to level 70 with this class, you can basically just switch class to another one and use the experience bonus there. So go up to a level 70 with a, like a, let's say, Paladin. And then when you get to level 70, switch to White Mage and level that one up to 70. So basically, you can use it on all your jobs up to level 70, like class jobs, but only for 90 days. So once you create, create your character and you're done, 90 days and you have this amazing buff trust me it's so fun to play with it and now you can see on my screen right now that i cannot basically pick this or this server because there is too many people who have created a character right now i am recording right now in main hours that means that means a lot of people is playing right now so i cannot do this but if i like let's say i woke up tomorrow like four in the night or something like that i set my alarm to some crazy time there is a very big chance that I will be able to create a character on these. I know it sucks that you download the game, you log on and you see your two servers are too busy so you cannot get your experience bonus. Well, then you can choose to just play normally and, you know, don't play with bonus. Or you can log off and come back in one hour and say again or come online in some crazy time mid at night and see if you can create your character. I basically did that. I think I set my alarm to four at night. Then I came in and my it was, it was free. I could create my character. So I was like, Hell yeah. And also every 90 day they switch server. So they right now it's Brigham and Luisux, which is getting bonus. But in 90 days, something like that, one of these other servers could get it. Basically. So just saying it. So in this case, because I cannot pick these, I'm just gonna pick like Cerberus. So you confirm. And you have now to select a forename and a surname. So basically a first name or last name. In this case, I'm gonna pick Dvalin YouTuber. Confirm begin a new game with this character yes in this case we will now be loading into the game it will start a cinematic telling you like what's going on in the world and stuff like that in this case we're getting into a queue which is pretty fun but yeah you basically get into like the game where you start your cinematic your first adventure begins and so on so once you get into the game, you can pick between playing with a mouse, keyboard, or a gamepad, like basically a controller. You can use a PlayStation controller, uh, Xbox controller. I even think the Nintendo Switch controller is working. I'm not sure, but I know controller for PlayStation and Xbox, they work. Since the game is also on PlayStation, you can play it on console too. 
I have tried playing with a controller. I also made a video about it and it works like super perfect. So if you want to play with a controller, do that, you know, play on a big TV, lie on the couch, something like that. It works totally good. In this case, I'm going to choose between mouse uh, and keyboard. And basically it's going to show you like all different things, which is like, you know, standard MMO stuff and so on. So basically you move between WASD, so you can see like moving around. You can also use Q and E's so like move sides from back or look around. And of course you can hold down your mouse like in other MMOs, like hold down right click, look around. It's a very perfect world. You can click on your mid mouse button and it will automatically like if you like click on mid mouse like the mid mouse here it will automatically like start auto running which is pretty neat also let's get away with these guys so basically that is like the movements of the game you can click click space to jump and like jumping around so the basics movement and then you might ask how can i run faster well down here you have a sprint so you can basically use that and then for 10 seconds you're gonna well run pretty fast well 20 seconds out of combat and then it can be used again like after one minute but it's, it's just like setting the standards for you how the control is working and then of course you have your spells where you can choose between like pressing one two three four five six six and I've, i'm pretty sure like per default you also get like this uh action bar above and of course you can also put key bindings on them so like control one two three four four shift one two three four four or like any other key bindings that's totally up to you but it's just like telling you the basics, fundamentals of controlling in this game. So like a very important thing that you have to know in this game is that when you create your character, you're already getting meted with your main campaign. Basically, when you start talking with the first person you meet in the game, you will like basically say accept the request. There will come a cinematic which you cannot skip. It's like you have to like listen to him, but you can still though like click very fast and like skip his conversations. But again, a lot of people who plays this game played for like the campaign, like like the campaign in this game, people say it's so good. Uh, I'm having a very hard time reading the campaign and listening. I'm watching the cinematics where they actually talk, but like this is where your main campaign starts. So basically now if we like move my webcam a bit, you will now see then this is where your main campaign starts. And the very cool thing in this game is like some like other MMOs really could use is that it always shows you up here. This is your main campaign you can always click on it and it will always open up the map and like let you know like if we move the map over here it will always let you know where is your main campaign at the moment so we can see like here i am over here and the main campaign is just over here that means when we go over to the main campaign using auto run you will be meted with thousands of quests in this game everywhere you go there's going to be a quest that you want to take that like shining up on you there will be quests all over the places and trust me my first mistake when playing this game without knowing what to do i took them all i took every single quest and i felt so confused i didn't know what to do in the game because i just had so many quests but i very highly recommend is just follow your main campaign the main campaign is the one that is important for you with like the cinematics the missions what's going on stuff like that the main campaign is the one you want to follow complete and like it's also unlocking dungeons for you it's unlocking classes for you it's unlocking the new expansions for you you will also be seeing this logo here you can see the light right there that basically means it is the main campaign so we're going to take that and skip the cinematics but and i'm going to show you because I am going to show you now because now we're going to move into the city like let's let's run into the city because now she wants me to like run around and like meet different stuff and it pops up with these tutorials all the time but now you will see a lot of quests is beginning to pop up like there's a quest over there which if you're a new player of course you can take it and like read it and do it but also you could feel very overwhelmed already getting a new quest because my main campaign wants us to interact with this one which I will come back to later what is but still you can see here oh there's a red quest there what is that and there's another quest over there and in 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 two minutes you're getting so confused so what i personally would say to new players just like me i would say play the main campaign just just play the main campaign and and another day come back for the other quest because the main campaign is the one which gives you tons of experience points 
it unlocks stuff for you. So just play the main campaign, which also below the main campaign, you have your class quest. So basically that one here is also very good. So I would definitely say, try to do all your class quests like priority one, and then do your main campaigns after that. Sometimes it gets out of sync with levels, so maybe you have to do that, do that one, do that one. But class quests are very nice because they unlock your upgraded class version and they also give you like um, new items and stuff like that. So, but again, do your main quests, do your class quests, and all these other quests you find around, just, I mean, for, for me personally, just ignore them. Just, you can always come back to them later. But and now a very important thing is that you can see right now this class quest here which is blue you can see if you can look very very close because you can see down here this quest is like just like yellow but the blue quest is around actually always unlock some unlock some kind of thing you can find a quest which is blue which could unlock guild heist which is like a dungeon type in the game it could even unlock a dungeon it could unlock different things in the game like mechanics and so you could say do main quests do class quests, and if you find a blue quest, it will possibly unlock something cool for you. So you could probably also do that one. But still, class quests and main quest is like priority one. And you will always be able to find them up here in the left corner. It will never disappear from you. But of course, you can also open up your quest lock on J, and you will see your quest here. And it has the main quest come, okay, you can say emblem here. But again, sorry. I have the behind my webcam right here but again you can also find it up here and just do the main campaign and class quests and you'll be fine so if we take a bit of time to talk about spells and key bindings we can see here i have a lot of different spells i play a warrior here and i'm level 38 and with this warrior here for well, i actually have like different spells if i press p you can see i have my action spells which basically is like my combat spells I use to go in like combat, I have heavy swing, maim, berserk, stuff like that. Cooldowns, damage spells, all that. Then I have some spells here which is for my role. Like I have provoke which like is a, we can say a tank spell which is like, you know, like taunt. It's basically a taunt. And you have like different stuff that is like for my role, like for tanking. We have my class spells, job spells here. We have some trades here which basically help me with different stuff. We also have orders, so you have when you actually like unlock a pet, like one of your like uh, what is called the chicken bird that follows you. I'm sorry for the Final Fantasy players, I cannot really remember what it's called. Then we have some general things like sprint, auto attack, die, like changing color of your gear, mount related, summon a random mount, you know, stuff like that. Teleport, return, always some stuff like that. And then main commands like stances, stuff like that. But these come, well, these spells here is, um, of course, spells that you can drag down to your key, key binding. So, for example, for example, I could, like, take this one down, hold it down with my mouse, put it down here. In this case, my spells are now locked. As you can see, I cannot move them again. I can, like, look down here and see what they do, but I cannot move them again. That is basically also because I have locked them. So, down here, you can see there's, like, a lock. Now, you can move them and then lock again. It's very smart so you don't like change your position of spells in a fight on the same time it's just like letting you know but basically i could go here and take this one here use my number one spell which trigger a you can say a effect on my number two spell you can see like it's glowing up and then which trigger an effect on my number three spell up here well actually i like moved them around with a mistake there we go so that's like you can say the combination of my spells and so now my number three spell is like blowing up you can see here boom 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 so in this case here you will have like different spells you can use in different situations and so on i don't know why these spells were like mixed up but now and then everything's back again but in this game it's it's, it's like you can say like over oh, most with tap targeting you click on your target you basically pick the, the spells you want to attack them with and then you just like go boom 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 it's it's pretty cool easy also if you're used to like all mmos where you like tap targeting combat which is like yeah that is the tap targeting combat if, if you are the person who likes to like customize how your game looks with the interface and stuff like that you can press escape and you can go into like hud layout 
And in this case now you can see I can drag and drop pretty much everything. You can even make them bigger, smaller. I am pretty sure you could do them bigger and smaller. If we take like the map up here, you can see like element size. We like, which is not changing the size, but uh, here you go, 200. This one's the fade one. So like you want to like fade it. But here you can see 200%, there we go. Save, move it around. And here we go. Now we have like a much bigger map. And also my hot bars, I can like, yeah, you can move shit around, you, even your main quest here, where you want to have your main quest and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just gonna like say, no, we don't want to save that. Oh, Jesus, my, my map actually saved. That's not good. Uh, but we can always go back, say 100%. And there we go. It's perfectly back in place where it was supposed to be. But if you want to like change around with your interface, that's how you do it. Also, I just want to like mention key bindings. Like if you go into your character conf configuration. So also if we could like gonna go into character configuration, you can see down here on hotbars, you can see that each of your hotbars, you can actually select how you want to have them. Do you want to have them like a, like a big bar, which is like just one line. Do you want to have two lines, three lines? Do you want them to be uh, instead of like landscape or want to have them portrait and little portrait or higher portrait, like stuff like that. You can also choose to have play here, which if you want to play with your controller, boom, then everything goes to like controller or back to like um, mouse. Also, if you go on the back here, we have key bindings where we can basically pick key binding. You can change key binding on every of your spells down here. So you can just like go ahead hotbars and here you go it says which hotbar it is and you just go and set in your settings it, it works perfectly fine it's it's good i like this it's very easy and yeah you know just if you wanted to change the interface or your key bindings another very important thing to talk about is your map so basically when you open up the map here you have the map where you can like stretch it out make it bigger zoom in whatever you want here you can see all the different things where you have questers and stuff like that. If you click on your main quest up in the top left corner, it will basically show you where your main quest is and you can like go down and find it here and stuff like that. But again here, in this case, you will see that you have different like zones. And if we like go back, you can see in the top left corner here, you have like a little like an arrow up. If you go on that arrow, it like goes all the way out. So here you actually basically have like the world. We could click down on drop in here. We can like see, okay, we're going to click on the city here. And then we are inside the city here and can like look around. But then you want to go on normally in the most, you can just like right click. Doesn't work. You have to basically click on this one here, this arrow up. And then you get out here and can click over here. If you want to see, you will first be able to see more when you actually have been here. But like go back, back, back. Okay, let's go over to La Cona here. And then let's go to this zone here. And here we can like see more stuff since we actually have been here and like let's go back again let's go over here and again because we have been here we can see stuff but if we're gonna go up here and then you know i got i could i, I could keep going all day long but you, you know I, I think you like begin to get it but this is your map get friends with it move it around as you want like make it bigger smaller do whatever you want with it like zoom in stuff like stuff like that more importantly is with the map is you basically have a spell here in called return and teleport. Yeah. Basically when you're teleporting or returning is whenever you actually start your main quest, you will be meeting this one called an Everite. When you right click, right click on it, you will like bind with it. And you can also see it on the map right now, it's this big crystal here. Basically if we go out here, <clears throat> you will find a crystal in each main place. That basically means if I already have been at a plate crystal somewhere, I can just basically, well, um, go in here, click on the pot pro on, on the, you can say like, um, the, the crystal and being able to teleport to it. So if you like go back over to this zone here, we go over to this one and basically, okay, well, I'm not able to teleport while I'm talking to another crystal. So let's go back, back, back. Let's go to this zone here, uh, this zone here. And we can see, oh, there's a crystal there. I want to teleport over there. Then it costs 133 currencies, which is pretty less when I have 44,000. But still, it costs a bit to do this fast travel, but can really save you a lot of time. So every time you come to one of these places here, it's very important. Talk with the 
you can say the, the one that what is it called the, the a for right and then you will be able to like very fast teleport to it but it's important to tell you that you can basically set one of them as your home then it means you can free teleport to it but using this return which has 900 second cooldown it's a long cooldown but it's worth it you can always like go back to your main place free like saying but still i can go with my teleport spell and basically teleport to any of the places i've been or you could just open up your map and basically like say okay i want to go to my main campaign it's over here fine the nearest teleport is this one costs 460 currencies fine let's go boom and i would be over there so it's just for letting you know this game has fast travel so once you have unlocked new places and clicked on the if right you can free not free but you can teleport over there and you know just like very quickly come around so it's just some people they don't know about this and probably being running around like every time they had to go for them back from from these places here they have like running around and spending a lot of time on it don't do that just teleport and you know i know it costs money but it's only currency i mean time is more expensive right now that we are also talking about if rights it's very important to let you know about when you talk about what you talk with if right you can basically like you know set, register different places as a free destination so basically you could like say you want to be able to teleport to this place as a free de destination or a favorite destination or you could even you know visit another world server so basically i could select i mean well, if we move it a bit i could move and you know visit one of my friends on the server called moogle but it has to be in my data center but again remember that in the next expansion we can visit other data centers but we still don't know much about it and here you can read a bit about it when you actually like visit other stuffs so it's basically just like for letting you know how it works you can also like teleport around in the a for net basically it means that in this zone here there's like small blues like these if you talk with them then you will be able to teleport like from these like boom like over here like boom 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 so you don't have to like move between the zones it's it's also up to you so let's talk about inventory and a mori chest so basically like any other mmo you can click on i and then it will open up your inventory which in this case you can see i can have up to 140 items you can have quite a lot of things in your bag in this mmo and it's it's not very normal for mmos we see that you can actually do that so we have like the inventories we have like currencies and you know like uh, key items uh like quest items and stuff like that so but here you can see like i have some dive for my items and you know stuff like that and currency so you can say these shots basically um but then you might ask where are your items and see that's a fun thing because when you hold on control and press i so hold on control and i your items and armor weapons stuff like that is having two different well you can say inventories it's confusing at the start but you will learn it in this case you can see i have all my weapon here i have my hats my bodies hands bells legs feet off hands uh, earrings necks wrist rings and soul crystal soul crystal is basically if you have upgraded one of your classes so in this case when i press and c you can see like here here's my class and i have a soul crystal on which makes my um, class to upgrade to a warrior so when i have this equipped i'm actually a warrior in this game but if i take it off i'm only a marauder which is not as strong but then if i take my soul crystal on then it will of course be the upgrade version which is a warrior a very cool little thing in this game is basically you can click on this one here recommended gear and then it will take on what gear that the game means is the best for you and you can say equip i don't know if people use this in end game because i am not in end game myself i'm just like learning all this stuff and getting a good feeling also the reason why i'm making this video because i want to help other people who start like learning the things that i had to learn um, but this one is really cool like putting in your recommended if you have unlocked other classes it's important to let you know that for example in this case here we have a conjurer staff if i equip that conjurer staff it actually changes my class over to the conjurer if i have unlocked the conjurer as you can see here we have this class and jobs 
You can see here I'm level 38 warrior, 25 conjurer. And then I can click on recommended gear and equip. And boom, it takes up all the items, which is the best in my inventory for the conjurer. So that's one of the reasons for maybe don't sell everything you find. Let that, you know, like save a bit of items because maybe one of the other classes you're going to unlock can actually use it. But of course, one day you will have to sell stuff because you don't have enough space. But again, I will go back to my um, my my axe. So I'm like playing a Marauder again, like equip the best items, put on my soul crystal. And we're back to warrior and with the best items again. So that's just for letting you know you have an inventory for armor, weapons, stuff like that. And you have a normal inventory for like random stuff. And also again, for your character here, of course you have your character here with different items, different stats. You can see in this case, this armor here is armor that is specialized for the gladiator, marauder. You can see all the like, with the green under the level, it says which class it's for. And because of course it's to the more tanky ones, it has a lot of defense magic defense and magic defense where if we like go back to um, um where, where was it control i if you go back here and find like a other one you can see it has lower defenses when it's an item which is not for tanks of course but it has different stats like totally different stats uh, stuff like that we can see over here acolyte bro but yeah that's of course that's the thing which tanking items so we have my hp my stats like intellect mind strength dexterity vitality you no know, all these stats i mean already when you buy when you read it i'm pretty sure like you already know what these items is about and of course you have also here average item level which is of course your average item level profile where we can see which grain company you join grain company is you have to pick between three companies like uh, you could basically say like factions or stuff like that. It ch changes the grind of the game, some cosmetics items and which city is your main city and stuff like that. Then you have, of course, which classes you have unlocked. Like in my case, I only have the warrior and the conjurer. Other classes can be unlocked later in the game. For example, Dark Knight is a class I can first unlock when I get to level 70, which is a, like a two-handed sword tank. And of course, here we also have the crafting uh, jobs which is like most of them make sense when you read them and then you have reputation which i don't have much of so it was just like for learning you about inventory and also like um your character profile and armor stuff like that as you progress through the game of course you would probably learn to become stronger or better in this game you will meet a character well uh npc with this icon above his head like with this leaf and when you talk about it, with talk with them, they will basically open up this hall of novice. It basically to, will learn you how to play the class, no, well, more the role that you're playing. As you can see right now, it's for the warrior, um, for the tank. So it's a tank training. I've already done number one. But the tank training here is learning you how to hold aggro, how to move away from fire, how to not fail, you know, stuff like that. It has different exercise levels. Each of these is giving you super cool transmog, like uh, like uh, cosmetic items, which also is armor with stats, but you can save them for like a look later because you can change like how you look. But these are very helpful for you to like learn about how to play your role class in the game if you're new to MMOs. But I, I highly, highly recommend them, you know, trying them out as they also unlock more items for you, which is pretty cool. So, you know, go ahead and try them. So for the last thing we're going to talk about is the duty finder, which is basically dungeons, trials, raids, stuff like that. When you press U, you will open up this box here, which is your duty finder. On the first window, you will find duty roulette, which is like helping you with leveling. So you can see that if I do this one right now, I will get a lot of bonus experience if I have a healer. We also have guild heist, which is another thing that I will talk about in a moment. If we go to the other one here, you will see we have dungeons and uh, dungeons is like, you know, typical dungeons. You have a tank, DPS, healers, stuff like that. And in this case, you can see I have Sastasha, the Tantara, Copperfell Mines, Thousand Moors of Toto, Karak. And normally the blue missions and um, what is called main, main campaigns is unlocking these dungeons well in my case all these dungeons has been unlocked through my main campaign 
So basically, every time I do my main campaign, I will just like meet. Sometimes it tells you you have to do this dungeon. Then you have to open up your duty finder, click on the dungeon you have to do, click join. Well, basically, like check mark it here. Uh, it's probably well I check mark this one. Like check mark this one. I want to do this one. Join, and then you will get in party of totally four members in all, like you and three of us. So that's the dungeons and how you join them. And it, you know, it, you get good experience, good items, stuff like that. And it will of course like put ring people down if they are a bit too high level. Then we, in my case, I have not unlocked other stuff here. We we have guild heist, which is something that you will unlock through blue quests. And guild heist is like a system where it trains you, like it it basically help, trains you. Like the first one here is like showing you. Um, how who who do you need to attack? Then we have like uh, this one on the armor. You have to like kill a big of a guy, and you know these missions just like helps you like uh, before you like get into a dungeon. They like help you like understanding what a dungeon could be, be uh, like what is it about stuff like that. And then we have trials, which is basically a dungeon. In this case, it is the dungeon. But it's without all the trash mobs. It's basically just you go in, you fight the big boss, and you get out. It's it's pretty fun and cool concept. Uh, if it just like gave more experience points, but still, it's it's pretty cool that you just go in, fight a big boss, go out again. It, it reminds me of Onyxia's Lairs from World of Warcraft, which basically this one is also like you go in, fight the dragon, and go out again. So stuff like that. But of course, here you will also unlock raids, stuff more like that, and all that. So we're just like letting you know that you can do dungeons, you can do guild heist, trials, the daily duty related where you get more experience if you play one of these, like here they need a tank, here they need a healer, and stuff like that. So if you're into dungeon, raids, PvP, all that thing, I haven't unlocked PvP, so I'm not gonna talk about PvP. So thanks for watching everyone. It was a pleasure having you all here. Let me know in the comments if you liked the guide, if you didn't like the guide, what, did I say anything wrong? Did I say something you liked? Let me know in the comments and also help me breaking the YouTube algorithm with commenting even more. And you know, this guide is made for all the new people out there who's gonna play Final Fantasy and not for the people who already have played it for years. Like me, I'm only level 38 myself, but I really wanted to make this video because I have been lost in this game for so long and you know getting help from all my friends and stuff like that so i really wanted to make a video that was for all of you guys out there girls guys girls who was just like me who also needed to know what is all these basic things how do i fast travel how do i get a fastest level what character should i create what is the servers all those small things is so important in the last end so that's why i made this video so we you could learn all the basic stuffs like i have learned so that's the main reason about this video. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all everyone who's watching this video. And if you want to see more and more RPG content or Final Fantasy content, subscribe to my channel. I will not let you down. I will be doing tons of more RPG content. And again, thanks, big shout out to MS Nomito and Deakin for becoming a high members or well, having one of the high tier memberships on my YouTube channel. If you want to have like special emojis or badges while I'm streaming on, on YouTube, you can become a member for only $1. But if you have the high ones, you're getting a shout out. So thanks to Dierkin and MS Nomito. Cheers out. And again, Dierkin, also thank you for helping with creating with this Final Fantasy guide. He is basically my mentor when playing Final Fantasy. So thank you so much for that. But again, thanks for watching everyone. It was a pleasure making this video. And again, it was just a basic beginner guide. I'm also still the beginner, but I really wanted to make a video that helps all the beginners out there to not quit the game. And if you're a Final Fantasy fan, don't hate on this video because I am making this video for helping people to stay in the game and not leaving the game because they are confusing. So I'm basically trying to help all the new people to stay in this game and you know help the game growing. Thanks for watching. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.